The Douglas Aircraft Company began developing a more streamlined bomber in the early 1940s in the United States, before the country got involved in World War II. The goal was to create a bomber with improved range and payload capacity through a more concise and streamlined structure. By May 1943, the U.S. Army Air Force signed a contract with Douglas for two prototype aircraft, hoping to design a bomber that could rival the B-29, but with a much smaller size and cost. Initially named XA-42, the aircraft seemed to be a very promising attack aircraft based on the designer's previous designs. However, in December of the same year, the aircraft was reclassified as a bomber and renamed as XB-42. The XB-42 featured a full metal structure, a mid-wing layout, and rear-facing propulsion. The aircraft had a sturdy nose section, designed to accommodate nose-mounted machine guns and cannons, with plans to install 12.7mm machine guns, 20mm or 30mm autocannons, and even a 75mm autocannon. This indicated the aircraft's strong ground attack capability, which is why it was initially classified as an attack aircraft. The nose of the aircraft featured a transparent compartment, serving as the bomb aimer's combat position. Above the bomb aimer were the pilot and co-pilot seats, each initially equipped with a small bubble canopy to reduce aerodynamic drag, allowing the two crew members to communicate via intercom. Behind the cockpit was the engine compartment, housing two Allison V1710 engines, each delivering 1325 horsepower. The engines had air intakes near the leading edge of the wings and exhaust ports located on the upper sides of the fuselage above the wing's leading edge. Additionally, there was a rectangular air intake in front of the wing roots and below the cockpit canopy, allowing air to flow through the oil cooler and radiator to cool the power system. An electric fan was also installed for ground use. The power from the two engines was transmitted to the rear of the aircraft through a long six-stage drive shaft, connecting to a gearbox that drove a pair of coaxial contra-rotating propellers. Interestingly, the propellers were not integral. The left engine drove the forward set of three-blade propellers, while the right engine drove a slightly smaller aft propeller. This design allowed the aircraft to continue flying with power from one engine in case of a failure in the other. The aircraft's wings featured laminar flow, enhancing its high-speed performance. Each wing had a 330-gallon fuel tank, with an additional 300-gallon tank that could be installed under the wing. The landing gear employed a tricycle configuration, with the nose gear retracting under the nose and the main gear retracting under the wing roots, then stowing on the fuselage sides, making for a complex system. The tail section featured a cruciform design with a large ventral fin that provided stability, while the ventral fin's tip was positioned lower than the propeller arc, protecting the propellers during takeoff and landing. The ventral fin's tip also had a cushioning device to prevent damage during touchdown. To avoid the crew being caught in the propellers when parachuting, explosive cords were installed on the aircraft to blast the propellers away before the crew bailed out. The aircraft had a single internal bomb bay capable of carrying 8,000 pounds of bombs or two MK-13 torpedoes. When the bomb bay doors were open, the aircraft could carry a 10,000-pound glide bomb or four 275-gallon fuel tanks for extended range flying. The aircraft's defensive armament consisted of six 12.7mm machine guns with two fixed forward-firing machine guns in the nose position and a pair of rear-firing machine guns on each wing's trailing edge. The machine guns were normally covered by automatic doors, but could be operated by the co-pilot through sighting equipment located behind the cockpit. The machine gun's firing range was from 15 de ground to 30 de graus in pitch and 25 de graus in each direction. Despite its weak defensive armament, the XB-42 relied on speed for survival, with an expected maximum speed of 440 miles per hour. The first prototype was completed in May 1944, but encountered many issues during test flights, including vibrations when the bomb bay or landing gear and flaps were open, inadequate engine cooling, and impractical dual bubble canopies. The large size of the cruciform tail's ventral fin affected the aircraft's angle during takeoff and landing, requiring a longer runway. 
The second prototype underwent modifications to address these issues, including continued enlargement of the cruciform tail, the adoption of hollow propellers, and the merging of the two canopy bubbles. Despite these issues, the overall flight performance of the XB-42 was good, with the second prototype reaching a maximum speed of 433.6 miles per hour in December of the same year, close to the expected speed. Both prototypes eventually crashed due to various malfunctions, and the second prototype had its propellers exploded by the crew before parachuting, leading some witnesses to believe it exploded in the air. Based on the XB-42 bomber, Douglas Aircraft Company also designed a jet-powered version, known as the XB-42A, which should be considered a separate aircraft. The XB-42 bomber was cancelled in March 1945 as the military shifted its focus to jet-powered models. The XB-42 bomber had an empty weight of 9475 kilograms, a maximum takeoff weight of 16194 kilograms, a length of 16.36 meters, a height of 5.74 meters, a wingspan of 21.49 meters, a maximum flying speed of 660 kilometers per hour, a maximum range of 2,900 kilometers, a maximum ferry range with full auxiliary fuel tanks of 8,700 kilometers, and a maximum ceiling of 9,000 meters.